Seas of water, seas of time. Both isolate Ardania, a realm steeped in humanity's myth and lore. Within the folds of Ardania's landscape dwell creatures of fantasy and of nightmare. Facing these challenges are epic heroes, some motivated by treasure and greed. Other heroes are inspired by honor and righteous ideals. and some by a genuine fear of evil's defiling touch. To overcome these dire perils, Ardania's heroes require but one thing, an inspired leader to defy the darkness. Accept Ardania's crown and forge new legends for this ancient land. Welcome one, welcome all. We're going, taking yet another trip back into the 90s, and today we are playing Majesty, the Fantasy Kingdom Sim. Hey, Gretel Confusiest, Elf. Offensive Lemon, Dennis Coax. Good to see y'all here. So, this is another of those games from the 90s that um, may not have been, like, a super influential influence, I guess. I hate using that same word again, but yeah, it may not have been super influential in gaming history, necessarily. Although it had some some things that you can see in later games, but was pretty influential for me personally. I played this game when I was younger. I had a ton of fun with it. It's interesting. It's a very it's a very different experience than most games in kind of the strategy genre. Uh, and in a way, that's kind of you can kind of see why that is from the name. It's not really a traditional strategy game. It's a sim. Excuse me, but choked on my own spit there. Um, basically, in Majesty, let me uh, rename myself here. In Majesty, uh, you are playing as a, a ruler, you know, the ruler of a kingdom. And one of the things that being the king, being the ruler of a kingdom means is you don't do everything yourself and you don't give direct orders. There's no clicking on a hero in this game and selecting them and ordering them to go somewhere and they just do it. No, 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 that's not how it works. You're the king. You give instructions, you place incentives, but then the heroes, who are not necessarily working directly for you, do what they want to do. And your job is to guide them into doing the things that you want them to do. Um, there's a whole bunch of different quests. You can take any of these quests. You can also set up freestyle quests. You can set them randomly. You can set all kinds of manual settings. Every quest is essentially a map, and every quest has different objectives. Um, I think, just for fun, we're going to start from the beginning. And we'll play this game for a couple hours and kind of show it off. Yes, it is a very majestic game. Alright, so, let's start with the Bell, the Book, and the Candle. Forgive the intrusion, Highness, but we've been robbed! Someone has stolen the magic bell, the holy book, and the eternal candle! Right from under our noses, they were whisked away from the royal treasury by some scoundrel! We must do something to recover them! They are treasures beyond value! <laughs> hey, Broken. 
Hey, here to loss. Okay, so I have finished this game before the expansion. I finished the game way back in the day. I haven't played this game for years, of course. So, also, the uh, the voice acting in this game, absolutely just, just perfect. Top notch. 10 out of 10. Love it. Okay, so... You can see down here our goals, we have to recover the three items which have been stolen and hidden in layers throughout the realm. No warriors or wizards are available in this quest. There are a whole bunch of different classes of hero. We'll get to them as we go along. Hey, guys, some more. Okay, so when it shows up, you can see I've got some city guards walking around. I've got a whole bunch of busy stuff happening over on this side of the window. I've got a mini map up here that I can click around on. I have a rogues guild, a blacksmith, a guard house, the sturdy dwarf inn. And over here, I have a trading post, which can research something. So we're going to go ahead and research healing potions. I'll talk about that later. Click on this scroll. It'll pop up a message. Rumors that the thieves who stole your artifacts from the treasury have fled, but they were forced to hide the artifacts as they left. Find the items before Understand. the thieves have a chance your to return. Trading post now offers healing potions. Okay, so, and this game is, this mission is kind of a tutorial mission, so it'll pop up these messages to show you what's going on. So the blacksmith is a place where heroes can buy better weapons and armor once you've researched them, and you can upgrade the blacksmith to get better stuff. Guard houses, host a member of the city guard. You can see them wandering around. If I click on them, see they have 20 health and they will go and fight people. Unfortunately, city guards suck. So this zombie is probably gonna kill him. I'm gonna research arrows on this guard house real quick. So we can research that. Then it will shoot arrows. The local blacksmith offers new services. Those messages will pop up constantly. If our kingdom is to prosper, it needs more heroes. There are a lot of messages in this game. We've improved the guard house. Oh Lord, you will learn to ignore them. So you got inns. Inns are places heroes can rest and heal. Trading posts are places where they can build healing potions, and they will periodically send out caravans to you, which uh, will bring you money. So this guardhouse, we've researched arrows, so now we can upgrade it. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade it. City guard will come out. The city guards respawn if killed, so they're free and infinite, which is what guardhouses are for. And the guardhouse will shoot arrows and the city guard will fight zombies. Okay, so we're protecting ourselves with the guardhouse. <laughs> yes, the palace is under siege. Over here, you can see this. So this palace is level one, right? It's not level two. I need four heroes in order to upgrade my palace Sorry, to level two. A building has been upgraded. I'm now going to research veteran guards, which will make my guard better. So I can see I have zero palace guards. I have one tax collector and I have two peasants. The tax collector, Your Highness, both my peasants are in this guard house right now. It needs more heroes. The tax Your collectors, Highness, we've improved the, guard house. the tax collectors will wander around and collect taxes. And as you can see, like there's 58 gold in this inn. Uh, there would be some gold in here if there were any heroes buying weapons, but we don't have, all right, hold on, hold on. Can I turn off some, I'm sorry, normally I don't mind those things, but they're really getting in the way of me talking here. So our goal, as you could, as you recall, was to find lairs, right? With have, which presumably have monsters in them. There's a monster. There's a Medusa. The the population of monsters in this game is really really cool. So that means let's build a, a camp of heroes that can go and uh, and find these monsters for us. So our peasants will go over here. They will automatically build the Rangers Guild. We're gonna upgrade this guardhouse. The tax collector is bringing in some money. Hey, chaotic. <laughs> Don't you? Okay, okay, fine. I'll go. I'll turn it up. I'll turn him back up. What? What that there we go. We'll resume. We'll let the tax collectors have their voices. Oh my God! Somebody is. Somebody is beating the shit out of my guardhouse. I could recruit rogues. I actually hate rogues, so I'm tempted not to. But I'll go ahead and recruit a couple of rogues just for fun, just to show you a hero. And we'll also recruit a ranger. So every kind of hero. Every kind of camp spawns a different kind of hero. So this is a rogue, he has light crossbow, soft leather armor, he moves pretty quick, and he's a chicken shit. Uh, every hero has randomly generated stats that fall within a certain range. Every different kind of hero has different stat ranges, they have different default behavior, they have different personalities. They do different things in different ways, basically. So rangers, uh, so rangers like to upgrade their weapons, which means they like to spend money at blacksmiths, and they also like to explore. So if you have darkness on your minimap, rangers will be strongly tempted to go out and push it back. Rogues, on the other hand, are uh, cowardly thieves, but they're highly motivated by bounties, and we'll get to bounties in a minute. I just don't like... 
I just don't like rogues. My problem is that rogues steal money from you. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade weapons some more. You can see I have 10,500 gold, so I, I've spent quite a bit of gold so far, but we'll get some back. Let's recruit some more rangers. This Medusa is wandering around. Um, monster stats, and it's worth looking at these. Monsters have different levels of defense, so you can see Medusas, and they have little little uh, blurbs about them here that you can read. Medusas are very, very resistant to magic, but they're not very resistant to missile or melee, so rangers, which are longbowmen, uh, beat them up pretty well. Uh, you can zoom in on heroes by going to them and then clicking that button, zooming the main map to them, and you can see he's leveling up very quickly, but he's about to die because of that Medusa. Medusas have a lot of hit points, 60 hit points. So, rangers, who start off with 25, sometimes do just get outright killed by Medusas if they stand and fight. Uh, that said, they can level up pretty quickly. He doesn't... Yeah. The wild spirits. He's joined the Wild Spirits. He didn't buy any healing potions. Uh, one thing that will almost always motivate heroes to fight is defending their home. So, this zombie here is fighting rogues. And the rogues will level up pretty quickly while they fight him, but also they will probably, uh, some of them will die. Uh, Scutty the Screamer is leveling up, and so is Skeev Heckler. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the, the rogues guild. You may also have noticed every guild has a different special ability. Rangers guilds can move, you can just move them around. Rogues guilds have the extort, which automatically collects all your taxes, but the rogues steal about a third of it. Uh, yeah, steal money for a quick boost of gold. Yep, they can do it. Uh, also, rogues can steal money out of gravestones and get dead people's money back into the economy. This tax collector, by the way, it has a minimum pickup of zero, which means he's constantly wandering out here and probably getting killed. I'm gonna put his mi minimum pickup up to 50, so he won't bother until they've built up some cash. Let's now build a marketplace. This is the core piece of the of the majesty economy. Marketplaces generate money, and we're going to put a guardhouse right next door to it. Yes, 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 the local blacksmith, new services. Let's upgrade that. Let's also upgrade the palace, so we'll have more tax collectors, more peasants, more of all good things. So now we've got some heroes, and you can see the rangers have actually gone and pushed the map out a little bit. They are seeking refuge at home right at the moment, but there we go. Velar Track Cutter is now exploring. We can put him into our little windows down here so we can take a look at him and we can zoom to him anytime we want. We're gonna upgrade to a veteran guard right there. This Medusa is fighting a guard tower, which won't actually end well for her. That's good. Buying some healing potions there. Your Highness, we've Blacksmith is upgrading. We have spawned a sewer entrance. Now, sewer entrances, this is kind of a, a a limiting factor on the sprawl of your kingdom, all right? Sewer entrances and similar bad things pop up as you get bigger, and they spawn monsters. So sewer entrances spawn giant rats and rat men. Uh, cemeteries, which spawn after a certain number of heroes have died, uh, spawn zombies and skeletons. Uh, Elris the Cartographer is struggling here. Get the fuck out of there, Elris. You do not want to be there. Narvin Tightgold is berserking. Okay, well, that's kind of a safe, uh... That's kind of a safe place to be berserking, I guess. I don't think we necessarily need level 4 weapons and armor. But so we've upgraded the palace to level 2, which means now we can build more stuff. We could build Dwarven Settlement or Elven Bungalow. Uh, there are certain requirements. You can only ever have one non-human species at a time. And we can also build various temples, which allow us to hire higher level uh, religious heroes. So, Crypta allows us to hire necromancers, Chrome allows us to hire berserkers, Fervus allows us to hire cultists, and if we had a warrior's guild, warriors of chaos, Daros allows us to hire... Uh, monks, healers, well they, no, they're not the healers actually, they're, they're like fast melee dudes. Agrilla allows us to hire healers. Once again, you can only have limited numbers of these. Agrilla and Doros go together, Fervus and Crypta go together, Chrome disallows all others. So, there's lots of stuff that kind of goes along. Like, as you grow, you get access to a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, this guy, as you can see here, is carrying almost 700 gold, which is not taxable yet, because he has it. Um... Well, which is taxable, because he hasn't reported it. Because he picked up all this money. 
Rangers tend to get rich because they go exploring so much, which is why they go in here and they buy stuff at the blacksmith, which puts gold in the blacksmith's coffers, which then I can tax. The rogues guild doesn't get taxed, if I recall correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and recruit another rogue. But as you can see, this guy has upgraded his weapons and armor a couple times, and his weapon is poisoned, which is lovely. Let's make this guy's minimum pickup higher also. And there's a troll attacking the marketplace. Trolls love money. Marketplaces end up with a lot of money. Ergo, trolls attack marketplaces. Trolls are pretty tough monsters, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put a bounty flag on him. We've improved the God House. That's 500 gold that will go to whoever kills this troll. Eh, it's probably not quite enough for a troll. Let's bump it up to 1,000. And now, all of a sudden, Elrus the Cartographer is interested, and he is over here shooting arrows, and now everybody is interested. And everybody who is nearby when the troll dies gets the money, and then because they're heroes and the money goes back into my economy, I will get some of it back. I'm sorry, I'm not really reading chat while I'm doing this. Uh, you want to hire the Medusa? You cannot hire the Snake Waifu, sorry. Uh, hey Nils, nice of you to join us. Krypton Furbus, goodbye frame rate. Yeah, kind of. Alright, so, this keep has the candle in it, so we are going to put an attack flag on it as well, another cool thousand bucks, and people will go on bounty hunt. Uh, lots of fighting going on, lots of rats popping up. Up oh, here comes a troll to steal my money. Fuck you, troll. Of note, once you put money on these flags, you can't take it back. The money is just there. Also, trolls hate peasants. Why trolls hate peasants? Not entirely clear, but they do, and they will attack them. Alright, so here comes the various people shooting arrows at this, uh, this ruined keep. Uh, but they're being chased off by the Medusa, which is a shame. There's also, like, a lot of spiders over here. Just really a lot of spiders. Uh, spiders are very vulnerable to magic. You actually kind of want wizards to kill spiders. Because uh, they're fast, and they're fairly resistant to many other types of attacks. But they're pretty low level overall, so Undan Longgate here is probably okay. He's about to level up, and he has a healing potion on him. Ah, eh, he might die. Undan, get the fuck out of there, man. Yeah, there you go, get the fuck out. Okay, zombie killed a rogue. Zombies are surprisingly tough, and rogues are very bad at fighting. Oh, that Medusa is trying to kill my tax collector. No, get away, get away, get away! If somebody kills the tax collector, you lose the money that the tax collector was carrying. So if they, if that Medusa kills this guy, I will lose 120 gold. Now I'll lose almost 300 gold. There it goes. Oh, he picked it up. He was close enough, he got the money, so I'll get some of that. This is a caravan. It's coming from my trading post. It goes to the marketplace, brings money. That just happens every day. I'm gonna research some stuff that will increase the income of the marketplace. And we're about halfway through destroying that ruined keep. In the name of the sovereign. Sovereign, your marketplace now. You wish you could rename heroes? I kinda do too. Uh, does extort take money from the caravans? I don't think it takes it from the caravans, but it takes it from the marketplace. And the marketplace is where like almost all of your money comes from. Marketplaces make hella money. I'm actually going to shift real quick to watching the stream on my phone so that I can see the chat a little better. Alright. Now, we can upgrade this. We can also hit the market day button. If we do that, then it generates a bunch of money and it closes the market for a while. So heroes cannot buy things at the market while the market day is in progress. That is the downside to it. Because the marketplace sells all kinds of really valuable things that you actually want your heroes to buy, like rings of protection that increase their armor, and eventually like teleportation and stuff. It's pretty cool. We've got about 2,800 bucks, so I am going to go ahead and build a temple to... Uh, let's go ahead and build a temple to Agrella. Healers are really good, and they also plant healing herbs, which if I recall correctly, rangers can pick up. And healers will just follow your heroes around, your other heroes, and uh, heal them, which is pretty neat. That's a dead zombie. Another caravan going around. 
Uh, when I upgrade, you can see I now have a palace guard who is better than the, the city guards. And uh, four peasants so I can build more stuff. And let's go ahead and build a dwarven settlement as well. Because dwarves are pretty neat. Uh, we're going to build that over here, I think. No, let's actually build it right there. Because the Dwarven Settlement shoots Ballista Bolts, and so we can shoot them at these Ratmen that come up out of the sewers. If we don't, they will try to steal my money. Ratmen love stealing money. They will absolutely steal the hell out of all your cash. They're like rogues, but monsters. They're the worst. Rogues are pretty bad. Ratmen are worse. Now, I want to clear this stuff out because I need to find these other lairs. So let's just put some, some small exploration rewards say 500 each. And that will draw the attention of rogues. Rogues love reward flags. Well, oh my god. Alright. We're gonna have to build another guardhouse. With every time you build a copy of a building, the next one gets more expensive. So, if you watch there, that's 1112 gold. I'm gonna build it out here to attract attention away from the tax collectors and stuff. The next one will be 1390. Lost a tax collector, also lost a rogue, Sith never spend, up here. Uh, another rogue might come by and steal his gold, but he didn't get here because there's so many damn spiders. He didn't manage to reach the explore flag. But Velar Track Cutter might. Oh my god, this troll. Stop it! Stop it! I'm gonna recruit a healer. I don't, I don't like rogues. I really don't like rogues. They're just, they're, they're just annoying. Here, here's the problem with rogues, okay? And it's something that's not super visible unless you're watching out for it, but it happens. Rogues steal your money. Rogues will like go around to houses and inns and something sometimes if they don't have anything better to do. And they will just take money out of the, uh, of the coffers. And the problem is, Rogues like to hoard their money, and rogues pay lower taxes than anybody else. They'll go down to the rogues guild, they'll put money in the coffers, and you don't get to tax that at as high a rate as you tax everybody else. So rogues actually take money out of your economy. Uh, and sometimes you'll see, like, a rogue will go to the blacksmith, and he'll buy stuff from the blacksmith, and then he will just immediately steal the money back, and it's so annoying. The dwarven settlement lets you recruit dwarves. Uh, dwarves are slow and tough. Uh, they build stuff like peasants do, which is pretty cool. Uh, and they're also greedy like rogues are, but they can't steal. So they kind of give you the benefits of rogues in the, that you can easily manipulate them with flags. But without the downside of uh, losing all your money to them. So we're going to put a thousand gold on that reward attack flag. Recruit another dwarf. I think we're limited to three here. Most low-level guilds are limited to four. Get another hero, another healer, and we've pretty much cleared out the monsters, so at this point it's just taking out these lairs to finish up. You think we can rename them? Uh, once they reach level 10 you can rename them, that's right. Uh, yes, tax collectors will return gold to the guardhouses. So guardhouses are a good thing to build just kind of around where tax collectors might be at risk. Both because the arrows will distract monsters from them, and the guards will, and because they can then hide in there. See, he's gone all the way up to a composite longbow, and he's got a ring of protection, which is super valuable. So there's nobody there right now. We're going to go ahead and hold another market day, get some more money. And, unfortunately, when we destroyed that lair, it released the evil Oculus, which is a high-level monster that does a ton of damage, and Narvan Tight Gold is about to die. Narvan Tight Gold died. He had zero resistance. He is not resistant to magic. We need to we need to put a quick little reward flag on that. That is an artifact. That's that magic bell. We need to pick that up. And of course, we also need to take the ruined altar, which my dwarves are doing. Good old Gadget Gear Grinder and Chamek Rock Pounder are bounty hunting because they love money. So they'll smash the ruined altar. We'll need to get the holy book, and we are victorious. <laughs> the 
bell, book, and candle are back in their rightful place. See, it was the fucking rogues all along. How dare they? The castle. A rogue identified as Cherik of Keldern. Unfortunately, he escaped while being returned to the castle. With a 15,000 gold piece reward on his head. Uh, I'm sure he'll think long and hard before returning do to... Do elves also team. double caravan income? I actually don't remember. And yes, that is a non-copyright infringing beholder. All right, so we can look at our stats here. We built 10 buildings. We had 17 buildings standing. We made 17,000 buckaroos. Spent 35,000, so pretty much all of it. We recruited 15 heroes. Six of them were killed. Nine of them were alive with an average level of six. And we have the danger level, which is the number of peasants, tax collectors, and guards that were killed. In this level, it was 37, mostly because we just had a lot of weak uh, monsters wandering around. So that's the bell, the book, and the candle. That's the introductory uh, beginner quest. And you can see there, we've got the star. We completed that. Uh, yeah, doubling passive marketplace income is great. Uh, I mean, elves are elves are kind of like rogues mixed with rangers. Um, they're very money focused. Uh, they spawn gambling halls, which make your other heroes waste time going there and gambling and losing money, and which pay no taxes. But they increase marketplace income, and they're actually pretty good at fighting. They're very fast, and they have an excellent ranged attack. So elves, not bad. I prefer dwarves myself, but elves are, I think, very defensible. Reliability is a big issue to begin with. Yeah, it, it, it is. That's the problem. Hey, Lucid, how's it going? All right, so that was a beginner quest. Let's do one more beginner quest just for fun. But then we'll dive into a couple of the advanced quests. Uh, the expert quests, like I said, I haven't played this game in years. I probably couldn't win the, these quests on one try just because of the way the game works. But like, hold off the goblin hordes, deal with the demon, free the slaves, quest for the magic ring. Those quests I feel quite confident about taking on. Uh, but let's, uh, tell you what. Let's go to the Forsaken Land. My liege, while this land holds great promise, I should point out that there is much that requires your immediate attention. Our town is still beset by the marauding monsters who lurk in this Forsaken Land. We will only know true prosperity when these interlopers are kept at bay. It's in your best interest I love the to voice avoid the I services really of a variety of heroes. With their skills and the blessings of the gods, we may be able to safeguard this community. Alright, so we have no Wizards Guild, no non-human races, no Palace Level 3, and no Temples. You have to destroy the evil castle, and you have to do it with only your basic heroes. So, Warriors, Rogues, Rangers, those guys. Alright, so, yeah, this is another tutorial quest, pretty much. We've got a market over here, but there's, like... Nothing defending it, so we need to move pretty quick. We are going to throw down a Warrior's Guild real quick. Warrior's Guild is probably my, like, one of my favorite basic structures. Uh, warriors are good at stuff in general. And, uh, yeah, good-looking targets to gold-hungry monsters such as trolls. Um, yeah, like I said, warriors are just kind of good at stuff, and they're tough. So they can live in a lot of situations when other heroes would die. Sovereign, your marketplace now serves you better. Um, in order to get to build over here, we need to clear this area, so I need more rangers as quickly as possible, so that they will explore the area around my marketplace and let me build a guard tower on the other side of it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I know the scenario you're talking about. I don't remember what it was called. Sovereign. Your marketplace now serves you better. Uh, yeah, most most levels in this game are pretty easy. Um, there are levels like the expert level. The expert levels are actually kind of tough. Join the wild spirits. And the reason they're kind of tough is just because you get hit with monsters really, really fast. So you have to build up and get moving really, really fast. If you could do that effectively, then you'll be fine. But, um... I'm kind of going to have this be like a financial district, so we'll have the marketplace, we'll have the blacksmith. I'll build a couple of guardhouses around them. I, I love the fact that the rangers sometimes see a monster, they just go, tough fight, and leave. They're just like, nope, fuck that. I ain't dealing with that shit. Ah oh, yes, yeah, Sir Bill Quick Perry. Oh, he's berserking. Oh god, it's a level one warrior berserking against a troll. That won't end well. Well, actually, he's leveled up twice already. 
the level up mechanic sometimes means that like, cause he, notice he got a couple swings in before the troll turned on him. That alone leveled him up to two. And so now the troll literally is just being outpaced in terms of damage by his leveling up. So look at that, one fight already level five. Hand to hand, 74% chance to hit, 20 strength. He's a good bean. He's doing well for himself. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. We're gonna set a flag to kill that creature den real quick. Um, that will stop, that will slow down the spawn of monsters, which helps us out. Uh, we're also spawning more houses. You spawn more houses as you get more stuff in your kingdom. They just generate a little bit of taxes over time, that's all. Uh, you're, you know, just a place for the tax collector to go and get you some money. Hold a quick market day. We're actually going to move this ranger's camp because it's kind of vulnerable out there. We're going to put it right there. So now we've kind of got this little district surrounding the marketplace. And that makes it harder for enemy monsters to come in here and steal all my money. No need for training, we learn on the fly. Yes, exactly. Uh, we can also build... We should be able to build a, a wizard's guild, I think. Maybe not. But let's build an inn anyway. We're going to put an inn... Inns are good for generating money. You want them to be kind of far away from the rest of your stuff, but not like super far away. Well, there's two strategies. You can either build inns kind of out there that the heroes can use to stop and rest at. Or you could just build a huge district of inns because they're cheap and they generate a reasonable amount of money. So like you could just build like a couple of inns right next to each other and right next to the marketplace. And it makes this little area where, where the tax collectors will pretty much just circle around and pick up like a thousand bucks and then go home, which is handy. All right, that's the Dark Castle. All we have to do is kill the Dark Castle in order to win the scenario. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. All right, we've got a sewer for the first time. This is a low level, easy scenario. So this really isn't a problem. We're just gonna put like 1600 bucks on that and the warriors and rangers should pretty much go and destroy it. Uh, you can also control where your minions go to an extent. You can see here like, you have the repair route and the tax route. If they're on this, if these are, are checked, then anytime this building is damaged, peasants will try to go repair it. And anytime it has money, tax collectors will try to go and take the money. If you don't have those checked, then they'll just be left alone unless you can click these one time repair it once or tax it once buttons. Uh, so you can kind of control, like if you have a building that's way the hell out there and you don't want the tax collector going there and getting killed on the way, you just take them off the tax route. And then eventually they build up a bunch of money and you send a tax collector out once. But as you can see, uh, inns generate actually quite a bit of cash. Not as much as marketplaces, but still quite a bit. And so it's good to have some. Uh, Sir Persis the Battlemaster is bounty hunting. And we're being attacked by a Minotaur. Fuck. Please kill this Minotaur. Alright. Yeah, he's wandering into enough arrows, he's not gonna have a good day. He might get Onden though, because Minotaurs hit super, super hard. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Let's go ahead and build... Uh, you can build statues, which increase loyalty. I'm actually going to build a trading post way up here. You want to build trading posts as far away from marketplaces as possible. Oh, we've been sent a caravan. So we've got 800 gold, two palace guards. Um, unfortunately, they walked directly into a troll. That's hilarious. I, I really do find that hilarious. Uh, that caravan is probably doomed. Like, almost certainly doomed. This guy is berserking and going to fight a troll. Does he have any potions? No. Well, rip to the homie. Sir Burl Quick Parry is... Eh, he's in danger. He might make it, but he's in danger. <laughs> Custom default tax collector settings. Yeah, no, I agree. You have to you have to control what your tax collectors do. Uh, Mr. Quick Parry, I don't know about this dude. Yeah. Yeah, there he goes. Trolls are tough, what can I say? Oh my god, the caravan might make it. I am shocked. 
Here go all my peasants slowly waddling up to the trading post. We'll go ahead and put another guardhouse near the trading post. And we've got some skeletons wandering into town. That troll is chasing this guy. The local blacksmith offers new services. Keep upgrading the blacksmith. Blacksmiths are fantastic because they not only make you money, they also upgrade your heroes. Which is pretty much exactly what you need. You need your heroes to upgrade themselves as much as possible. I could build a second warrior's guild. More inns. I'm gonna build a second warrior's guild. And I'm gonna put it right down here. The local blacksmith yeah. offers new services. And upgrade the blacksmith. Okay, we've cleared off enough monsters that now my dudes are, I think, going to be able to make it to the castle. Unfortunately, there's a lot of skeletons wandering around. Skeletons are basically immune to rangers because they have 88% fuck your arrows chance. Uh, this rat man is in terrible danger. And my guardhouses are getting shrecked because all my peasants are up north. Your Highness, we've improved oh, werewolf. the guardhouse. Werewolves are a very dangerous monster. They have high HP, decent dodge, and defense scores. And we've got rust spitters, which are pretty weak monsters, but still annoying sometimes. Uh, Sir Bren Knightley is paralyzed with fear. He's trying to run, but he can't get out around the werewolf. Persis the Battlemaster is running. Oh god. Oh, there's about to be a massacre. Oh, this is bad. Run, Bren. Oh good, he's got two more health potions. He'll live. More research healing potions. Upgrade that. We've got our veteran guard research. Don't we? Oh! Have my city guards not died yet? I'm impressed. Yeah, those are those are city guard number one and number two. They actually haven't died yet. Really impressive. Where's my Rangers? Uh, so we got some free extra rangers, which is kinda cool. Yeah, a party of heroes from a nearby land have appeared and wish to join the kingdom. Pretty neat, but we can't upgrade to level 3 in this game. Uh, Sir Palador the Victorious is just over here trying to take on the whole damn world. It's not gonna end well for him, probably. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Let's recruit another warrior there. Let's start recruiting some more warriors down here. Yeah, you can see these three rangers not having much luck killing one skeleton. Is this the Yes My Lord game? No, I don't think so. Alright, come on, guys, guys, come on, come, come, destroy the evil castle, please. I'm done with the scenario. We've got it in the bag. We don't need a whole lot more help. This marketplace has 2,500 gold in the coffers, my god. Yes, warrior, you are on your way. And we've got another caravan heading down. So the amount of gold that caravans carry is A, it's multiplied by the level of the marketplace, and it's affected by how far away the trading post is. So like, if you have a marketplace down here, a trading post up here will have the highest amount of gold because the distance is furthest. Oh, I lost another warrior to these trolls. Man, it's just a dangerous kingdom out here, you know? It's just, it's just a hard knock life for warriors. But the evil castle is slowly going down under a swarm of warriors. We got some archers out here with high level upgraded swords. This guy found a plus two short sword in a, in, the, in a chest somewhere, which is pretty neat for him. His veteran city guard is getting eaten by giant rats. Rip. So sorry about it. Uh, Sir Argoth Knightley got clubbed. Can I also just say I love the names that they give them? Battlemaster, Broadview, Huntswell. All right, and we win the scenario. The horrific incursions have ceased, Majesty. Children may once again play in the streets and nearby meadows. Hunters and peasants may carry out their work without fear. Look, Althea, I'm not, I'm not recruiting rogues. I'm sorry, I don't like them. I don't like rogues. 
what can I say? I only lost 12 henchmen in that scenario. See, look at that. It was good. I only lost five heroes and 12 henchmen in that scenario. It was fine. Who needs rogues? Sometimes you need rogues, but not very often. All right, time to move on up. Now, let's try these, by the way, these are the expansion missions. So like there's a beginner mission, there's some advanced and expert missions up here. These are all from the uh, the Northern Expansion, which has some extra buildings and monsters and stuff. And some of those missions are quite difficult. Let's go with all of these missions, all the advanced missions start to become more interesting than the beginners because they have like real specific goals. Like Quest for the Magic Ring and Quest for the Holy Chalice are you have to find a specific item, destroy the lair and then take it back. And there's a twist that you find out when you play those missions. Deal with a demon just requires you to make a lot of money. It's not very difficult. Uh, free the slaves requires you to burn down a whole bunch of different structures, but you get some free heroes for doing it, which is kind of cool. And hold off the goblin hordes is kind of a tower defense mission. It's like you're playing like you normally do, but also every now and then a huge swarm of weak enemies just piles onto the screen and tries to kill all your shit. Uh, rogues also rob your gold from shops. Yep, that's right. Uh, activated ability? Yeah, I don't really like it. Uh, the, the, the paladins are absolutely monstrous. Paladins are great. I love paladins. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do Quest for the Magic Ring. Majesty, I fear my vision grows alarmingly dim. The dark plague which grips our land does not respect the boundaries of these castle walls. This epidemic sweeps through our land, leeching away the very life from your royal subjects. Our best doctors seem unable to slow the pace of this dread disease. Before slipping into unconsciousness, the mighty wizard Rezenthal insisted that there was only one way to halt this affliction. You must recover the Ring of Healing, which the legends say is located somewhere in Ardania. Please, your majesty, act with greatest haste. All right, greatest haste. Here we go. So we have to recover the Ring of Healing in order to cure a mysterious magic plague that sweeps across the nation. And there are no restrictions on what we can build. Oh, there is another kingdom, though. So we can see there is a red kingdom. We start with the Temple to Helia, which gives us the Solari, the Solaris here. Uh, they're not bad. They're pretty good. They're not, like, fantastic, but they're all right. We're going to go ahead and start off by building a Ranger's Guild and a Marketplace. We're going to put the Marketplace kind of down here in the corner-ish. And then we'll get a guardhouse to put near it. Also, you may notice we can now build gnome hovels. Uh, gnomes are really interesting. They're weak, but the main thing about gnomes is that they're not really heroes. Gnomes are super peasants. Gnomes build very, very quickly, and they're very, very cheap. So you recruit them, they love to build stuff, they let you build buildings very quickly. Um, once you've got them, however, they lock you out of elves and dwarves, and they're a pain in the ass to get rid of. Which can be a problem. Uh, yeah, all the good things about rogues are things you get without actually recruiting rogues. That's incredibly true. Um, rogues guilds are good, and I actually probably should build one and upgrade it. Uh, rogues, however? Mm, rogues are not very good. Gonna go ahead and throw down a warrior's guild. Get a couple of rangers. Research some healing potions, recruit another solari. Solaris like to wander and they gain experience by doing it. Uh, that's not a fight you should be in. I'm gonna throw a spell at that. I'm trying to throw a spell at that werewolf to try and kill it off. Uh, you can cast spells for money. So we're just trying to kind of help this this out. Uh, this healer hero from the uh, this healer from the other kingdom fortunately helped me out. So Glow Gree Sky Glow, uh, aka Moon Moon, managed to survive. Uh, Solari are pretty decent. They're not super high stat, but they have a very high hit chance. They're kind of like warriors, but faster. Um, they have weaker armor, though. So they have Iron Chainmail, which is six, and I think warriors start with, like, eight? Question mark? I feel like eight is correct. But they kind of have similar armor to, um, 
it's kind of light. They're vulnerable, but they hit hard, is kind of what Solari do. Also, at high levels, they can actually cast a couple of spells. And, of course, they give you spells down here. So all these spells that are grayed out are ones that I cannot cast, but various different temples and structures will unlock them for me. Also, if a gnome reaches a certain level, they turn into a, a warrior gnome. Yeah, yeah kind of. Uh, gnomes, gnomes fight with knives, and they're not great at it, but they're like, okay. What's your armor? Let me see what your armor is. Uh, yeah, nine. Warriors have nine armor. They're very tanky. But they have a ten attack, whereas Solari have twelve. So you can see kind of what the difference is. Solari are fast. They hit hard. Uh, they're not very defensive. Yes, 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 I know. The royal treasury is nearly empty. I get it. I need to build some, uh, some inns. Alright, so, yeah, there's another, there's an NPC kingdom with NPC heroes wandering around. Uh, there's a reason we should be paying attention to them that I'm not going to spoil for you just yet, but trust me, you do need to pay attention to them. Uh, if we can keep Glory Skyglow alive, she'll be good. Uh, and she does, Solari are smart enough to buy healing potions. There are some heroes who are too stupid to buy healing potions, which is kind of hilarious. But it's true. It's is undeniably true. Tax Collector, do you have any money? Alright, you got some money. Okay, let's put a guard house right there. Well, let's put it right there, actually, because we don't know where the, uh... <laughs> we can't be sure where the, the rats are going to start to come from. Okay, the neighboring kingdom gave me some money. I forgot that they did that. Let's go ahead and build a second inn right there. And another marketplace also probably wouldn't go amiss, but let's upgrade that one to level 3 first. Another warrior, another ranger, and we'll upgrade the temple to Helia. Put a little bit of a bounty on that creature den. Now, on this map, the problem with bounties is often heroes from the other kingdom, like Fen the Inquisitive there, will take you up on the bounties so they get some of the money, which means that money might not come back to your economy. So you have to keep in mind that. Uh, and, yeah, Solari are mutually exclusive with adepts. <laughs> Level 10 gnomes. Level 10 gnomes are kind of cool. Uh, teleportation amulets. I would like those, but... Now, here's the nice thing, though. Sometimes these guys will come to your inns and spend money, or they will go to your marketplace and buy stuff, which, on the one hand, gives them items that makes them stronger and they're not yours, so... You don't, may not necessarily like that, but on the other hand, it means you get money. Uh, I haven't built a blacksmith yet, which is a crime. Let's go ahead and build the blacksmith so that we can start upgrading people's weapons. There's the sewer entrance. That's fine. That's not a bad place for a sewer entrance to be. They're not close to my main money-making operations. Yes, yes, yes. You've improved the guardhouse. I am so poor. I needed to focus a lot more on making money. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. Uh, adepts are fast, yeah. Like, they're good, but... <laughs> and yes, yes, rogues can in fact be bribed to destroy their own guild, which is hilarious. Ah, wizards. I love wizards, but they're so hard to keep alive. Low-level wizards are just the worst. Like, look at this guy. This guy's got eight health. He's level three. He's being chased by a spider. And, like, odds are... There he goes. He's dead. Level three wizard killed by a single spider. Just one bite. That's all it takes. Nobody here? Are you going to the marketplace to buy stuff? Yeah, you are. The Solari are doing really well. Also, the other nice thing about the Solari, sometimes they'll garrison guardhouses. They'll just go there and stay there if they don't have something else important to do, which is actually really neat because they'll reinforce the guards and they'll just kill random wandering monsters and generally make your life better. Sovereign, a building has been upgraded. Let's go ahead and get some veteran guards. I don't need to worry about teleportation amulets. I do need to upgrade my 
blacksmith, though. Your Highness, we've improved the guardhouse. We got veteran guards there. That is the other kingdom's warriors guild. That's their inn. I would like to upgrade the palace when I have a minute. Will rogues steal from adjacent kingdoms? Yes, all the time. Uh, high level wizards and armies? Yes, a high level, like a level 10 or 15 wizard, is absolutely a world beater. It will just, they don't even give a shit. High level wizards will ruin everybody's day. But in order to get to be high level, they have to live through the low levels first. And living through the low levels for wizards is like a huge challenge. Low level wizards are just really bad at stuff. Getting some exploration going. Aha! The hidden ring site. So we've found the ring. We've also found a demon wood, which is one of the most hilariously dangerous creatures in the entire game. That's not actively a boss. Uh, demon woods are horrifying and dangerous, and I don't like them. And I want them to go away, and they smell bad. Uh, I never found vet guards worth it. Uh, I like them. They, they can actually beat low-level monsters, which regular guards uh, struggle to do. Also, I think I am going to go ahead and build another marketplace, just because I need the money. Where can I put my second marketplace? That pool of water is in my way. I'll put it right over there. Get out of my way, Ganyo. And we'll need to put another guardhouse next to it to stop the, uh, the rat people from coming and stealing all my shit. So this is the other kingdom, and as you can see, they are pretty well developed. However, their marketplace is low level. They've got gnomes. They have a gnome infestation. Uh, they have a level 3 palace. They have a, a healing temple, a temple of Agrilla. And they've got a temple to Doros, which means they could recruit paladins, but they're not recruiting paladins because they're dumb. Uh, that troll is fighting... Radiella actually probably has this. Like, her odds of winning this are pretty decent. Especially because she has the Solaris Sun Sunscorch spell, so yeah, she, she pulled that off pretty well. We got a new marketplace here. We'll research market day healing potions. That bear is trying to kill my tax collector. How dare he. This tax collector doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Not going to attack the Hidden Ring site just yet. I need to kind of get myself on more stable footing first. Mostly by that, I mean I need to make a hell of a lot more money and I need to upgrade my palace. <laughs> can I get dwarves on this level? Yes, I can, but I have to upgrade my palace first, which requires 2,800 smackers, which I don't have. We need more money. We require additional cash. But I've got actually quite a good stable of heroes right now. I've got my Solari are all up to level 4. My Rangers are all level 6 or level 4. My Warriors are low level, but that's because they haven't been doing a whole lot of fighting. So that's okay. Here, they're going up here to uh, fight this Ratman. Warriors like to go hunting now and then to get experience. And there we go. They'll level up a couple times off this guy before they kill him. There we go. Now I can upgrade to level 2. That will increase my income significantly. It will just make everything kind of better. I'll build a couple more uh, a couple more inns around the place. I'll upgrade that marketplace when I have a minute. Put a guardhouse next to it. And there we go. We're at level 2. So now we have three tax collectors. Your Highness, the elves wish to join our prosperous kingdom. And now we can get elves or we can get dwarves. Um, I'm kind of tempted to get elves. If nothing else, just to show them off. Let's upgrade that. Let's go ahead and get elves. They're not my favorite, but it's good to show them off. Have I found the ring? Yes, I have found the ring. Um, elves are... Okay, so here's the thing with elves, right? 
blacksmith offers new elves are elves get you more money however elves are obstreperous they don't like to be commanded um they like to go sit in in inns and sing a lot which makes them money but doesn't make Your you highness, any money we've improved the godhouse and uh, they also spawn, as I said, gambling halls, which your heroes use to go and gamble and lose all of their money instead of paying taxes on it. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses. Let's get a couple more. Ill the Great Unknown. That's, I, I love, I'm sorry, I love the inn names. The Great Unknown, the Cozy Cultist, the Dancing Troll, the Friendly Lodge. You just gotta love it. You've got to love this stuff. I could research teleportation amulets, but... I don't really want Your to. A new building is complete. Okay, so we've got an elven bungalow. Uh, we can only recruit a couple of elves here, but this is the important thing. It doubles the amount of gold generated by your marketplaces. So yeah, they'll spawn, I guess it's the elven lounges they spawn. Um, they let you build gambling halls. I could also build a wizard's guild. Hold a market day. Hold another market day. So this is the elf. He has a longbow, he has iron chain mail, he's going to perform as a bard, which means he's going to sit in an inn and do nothing. He's going to sit in Brynwell's Haven and do nothing for a while. And he'll earn some money. And as you can see, the bungalow can only hold two heroes. In terms of stats, elves have an incredibly high ranged attack skill. Like, they start off with 90 ranged skill. Compare, this guy has only 81 and he's level 7. So the elves are very, very good at shooting people, but they have very low HP and they're kind of cowardly. So, you know, pluses and minuses. Um, this tax collector is about to get absolutely rat ganked. And I hate it. You hate to see it. No! No! Oh my god, they got him. Fuck you, rat man. The absolute worst. I am going to build another guardhouse right outside that sewer entrance. Hold a market day. A building has been upgrade. upgrade that. Okay, so we got some uh, we got some layers up here. My services may help. Gonna put a few hundred dollars on the goblin camp. Uh, the Solari are pretty self like guiding, so they will they'll go and raid layers by themselves, which is nice. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. Elves are a nightmare. Elves make your economy go through the roof. These are both true. A building has been upgraded. And yeah, don't worry. We're upgrading the marketplaces. We're doing it. Uh, I'm not bothering to research the teleportation amulets because they don't get bought a whole lot. They get bought sometimes, but not a, like all the time. I, I have to say, though, despite the fact that wizards are really hard to use effectively, I do love their lines. All of the all of the voices in this game are a hundred percent gold. Um, let me build a. Ba, 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 ba. Your Highness, we've improved the God Temple of Doros for paladins. Don't really need them. I'm gonna build a wizard's guild. There's the Elven Lounge. So heroes will spend time and gold here. They collect no taxes. So the Elven Lounge literally just sucks money out of your economy and makes your heroes do stuff that's not useful. But it's fine. Because our economy is getting to be pretty damn good. Let's hold a market day real quick. How my heroes doing? Doing all right. Uh, the Wizards Guild, by the way, builds itself. It doesn't take peasants to do it. And it also can enchant weapons. Two plus one, which is pretty cool. Uh, if these guys want to burn down Brimwell's Haven, that's actually okay with me. It's not my inn. That uh, looks like uh, Sir Duvain Sharpwit here is going to intervene. Okay, so by building the Wizards Guild, you get two really important things besides wizards. First of all, you get access to spells. So I can now cast Farseeing and Invisibility, and when I upgrade it, I'll be able to cast Lightning Bolt, Anti-Magic Shield, then Lightning Storm, and Supercharge, which I don't think I've ever cast. Also you get the ability to build wizard's towers. Okay, that guy got murdered by a demon wood. Rip. And wizard's towers are cheap. You build them within a certain radius of the wizard's guild. They have to be a certain distance away or less. They build themselves and you can enchant them for a small fee and then they shoot bolts of magic at people who come near them, any enemies. So they're a pretty solid defensive structure. 
Stop chasing my tax collectors. God. You're the worst. The absolute worst. Alright, Helen the Quick has decided to go garrison a guardhouse. Okay, we're gonna start putting bounties on these demon woods. Uh, demon woods are really tough, but by killing them off, we will... Oh, there we go. Those two should be able to take out a demon wood. By killing them off, we will open up the ring site. This fucking troll... Coming in here, trying to mess up my day. How my wizards doing? Uh, yeah, my wizards are still level one. Kind of to be expected. Don't elves and inns increase the inns income? I don't know. I don't think so. Invisibility is really good. Sovereign! A building has been upgraded. Let's max out my wizards. Um, let's also upgrade to level 3 there so I can have Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is super expensive, but it's a very powerful spell. Your Majesty, royal really and that demon wood died. Glory Sky Glow has hit level 10. Should I rename Glory? Uh, and she is... Oh, fuck. Uh, ag that's actually bad. <laughs> that's not what I... <laughs> Glory, stop. <laughs> Glory, please. Glory. Glory, no. Don't raid the ring site yet. I, I, I wasn't ready. Oh, God. Oh, God, Glory. Okay, Glory is carrying $1,500. All kinds of money in Glory's bank account. Alright. Let's go ahead and build a temple. Um, Let's build a temple to... I kind of like Crypta, to be honest. Like, I, I really like the Crypta priestesses, but let's go ahead and build Doros. That's the real traditional uh, thing to do here. We'll build the Temple to Doros back over here. We'll go ahead and research level 4 armor. Hidden ring sites about half dead. <laughs> Perino, the dignified one, is fleeing for his life. And we're also going to build a second Warrior's Guild. And we're going to build the second Warriors Guild up front over here. And the reason we're doing that is because the Temple to Doros unlocks probably the most powerful hero in the game. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. Yeah, you can't make your heroes run away. They just do what they want to do. Level 11, though, Glory might actually be able to get out of this. Sir Norvus the Courageous, unlikely. Can I make you invisible? No, you're out of range. Now can I make him invisible? He's still out of range. Yeah, he died. Okay, so we recovered the magic ring, we are suddenly at war with the other kingdom, and also we have the Wrath of the Black Phantoms who will attack anybody who holds the ring. So we have to take the ring down to here in order to end the curse, depose the Black Phantoms, and restore peace. But now, we have paladins. I just lost a wizard. Sir Billum the Mighty died as well. Okay, so yeah, the magic ring. And since we suddenly went to war, all of a sudden, all the red heroes are attacking me. Glory Sky Glow is fleeing in terror, become invisible. Black Phantoms are the worst. They're basically immune to magic. Let's get some Paladins out here. Wait. Wait. Battling enemy hero, where are ya? Alright, I'm not gonna bother recruiting any more wizards. Also, we spawned a Fountain, which gives us an extra tax collector. Oh my god, I just lost a paladin. Oh, because of the black fucking phantom. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Alright, yeah, this guy is... This guy is a problem. And I think Lightning Bolt, like, doesn't hurt him. Yeah, because he's so immune to magic. The black phantoms are very, very powerful. You need, like, absolutely max level heroes in order to fight them effectively. 
Fortunately, they end up wandering off over time. Okay, we're being attacked by Minotaurs. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Oh, the Black Phantoms. Oh, the Black Phantoms. Black Phantoms are the worst. Yeah, get some get some experience fighting this troll, please. Still got Glory, and Glory is doing the very smart thing of enchanting her weapon. So she's got a max level lead-filled mace that she's enchanting to be plus three. Nope, be quick, become invisible. Ah, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Put an anti-magic shield on her quick. The anti-magic shield is pretty much the only way to fight these guys, because it makes the people you cast it on largely immune to the massive AoE spells that they throw around, like they're going out of style. Yep, there's Glory. 15 plus 2 and enchanted chainmail. Another wizard down. Melting, 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 melting. Yeah. Yeah. Can you resurrect your heroes? Uh, yeah. Eventually it becomes a potential option. Up, oh, Sterling Ravenwood walked into the wrong neighborhood. Ooh, tough fight. Yeah, that's right. It is a tough fight. Get out of here, Sterling. Get out of here. All right, I, I need to build some wizard towers to expand my, uh, my magic range. I also need to build some libraries if I want to hire wizards. Libraries, if you want wizards, are essential, and I should have done it before now. No oh, hey, look! This wizard survived! He learned Fire Shield. He got to be level 2. Well done, sir. Also, I lost an elf, but who really cares about that? What are you doing? Oh, hey, you killed a guy. Nice. What am I... Uh, no. I, anti-magic. Anti-magic. Fuck. I didn't have the range. Just didn't have the range for it. But as you can see, our paladins are actually pretty pretty dope. Paladins are very, very tough. 11 and 14 armor. Solid, solid stats. Compared to warriors. They are more than twice as expensive. Uh, I have also spawned a graveyard, which isn't great. Because that means that skeletons and zombies will spawn from it. Now, I need to get the ring. I think the Black Phantoms are... Your Highness, our research in the library is complete. The Black Phantoms are wrecking my the absolute shit out of me. I need another Wizard's Tower. Wizard's Towers, unlike most other buildings, do not increase in price over time. So you can see, they, they give you a smaller... If you look up in the mini-map, up in the corner, when I'm trying to cast a spell, they give you an increase in your range. But I, um... I, I really do need to get this, uh, the magic I ring here. The wild spirits. And I also need my guys to stop getting wrecked by phantoms. I am, I am literally out of rangers. Let's get magic resistance. That will help a lot against those spells if we can tr get everybody to buy magic resistance. What's Glory doing? Your Highness, our research in the library is complete. Ah, Glory is in. Glory is over here fighting a kingdom. Glory, why would you do this? All right, let's recruit some wizards. Here's a whole bunch of enemy heroes coming down to cause trouble and start shit. Buying healing potions, yes, I want to encourage that. Your Highness, our research in the library is complete. Alright, let's upgrade the palace, upgrade the library. The more spells you can teach wizards, the better. Even at low level, if a low level wizard knows like four spells, much more likely to live. I 
also need yet more wizard's towers. Evil has won. God damn it, Divana. This is kind of the problem with paladins. Like, paladins are really good and strong, but also they will throw themselves into fights. They don't give a shit. They'll just go in. They will absolutely just go in and try to fight and get wrecked. All right, we're at level three. Now we could build another temple to Helia if we wanted. Uh, I'm gonna build a temple to Agrella. Get some healing going on. I need, I still don't have the range. God damn it. I could also build a fairgrounds, but. Um, where did the ring go? Ah, they were trying to take it down there and they got wrecked before they got to it. Go on, go get it. Go get it. How are my wizards doing? My wizards are doing nothing. Alright, let's level that up. Let's level that up as well. These spells don't have range limits, like the wizard spells do, so like, having access to healing and resurrection is a really, could be really useful. Kira, Kira, you better, you better watch yourself. I'm gonna drop stone skin on her. Okay, so now we have access to Resurrection, finally. Okay, so Kira should be able to win that, but then... We have to worry about that asshole. Let me steadily expand my Wizard Tower... ...network. <laughs> Alright, so Kira has now got Shield of Light, which is a fantastic spell that Paladins can cast on themselves. It's half the reason why Paladins are so good. Also, my heroes are just in the enemy kingdom absolutely wrecking their shit. Um... Good job, team. Yeah, they're just, they're just, that's what they're doing, okay. That's fine, I guess. How's it going, Kira? Are you having fun? Good. Uh, I really need somebody to pick- okay. Fuck this guy. I'm putting $3,000 on killing this guy. And to help you out with that, we'll drop some anti-magic shields on whoever goes to do it. Out of range. Oh, I'm not- I'm in range. I'm in range. Come on, come on. Let me cast it. Let me cast it. I'm almost in range. Let me put the whammy on him. He is avoiding me. You still have the anti-magic shield, don't you? No, you don't. Anti-magic shield? Oh god. Okay, my wizards are fighting a troll. They might actually win this. There we go. That's the way you do it. I I, oh lord. Has won. No fun at all. I am just, there are so many heroes dying right now. So, so many. I'm just being held up by the fact that my economy is ridiculous. Recruit some more heroes, healers, why not? Can I cast Lightning Storm on these guys? No. I need another Wizard's Tower. Our research in the library is complete. Oh, they might get him. They're gonna get him. They're gonna get him. Oh my god, Glory, don't die. They got the Black Phantom. Uh, also, I'm gonna resurrect Radiella here. And I'm just gonna hover the heal button over Radiella. She's level 9. 
With enough support, she can probably take on this Black Phantom. This is how we're doing this. Nope. Those, that spell does so much damage. We're just, we're just healing. Good job, Radiella. Well done. Alright. Have, did you get the ring? You got the ring. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. We win the scenario. There we go. The ring Ooh. has saved us all, Majesty. As your heroes carried the relic back into town, it was as if a deep winter snow had instantly lifted. The town literally sprang to life. Once again, your enlightened leadership has led us to safety. Ah, yes. My enlightened leadership. The enlightenment is staggering. Incredible enlightenment. On the plus side, we made a hundred thousand gold in the process of that mission, so okay. <laughs> Only Wizard Heroes next map? No. Absolutely not. 100% no. My liege, it's that is, good to see you again. That is asking for well trouble. Aware, Ardania's hotlands have flourished under your steady rule. Indeed. Your leadership has ushered in a new era of prosperity. What, already? However, the untamed frontier of the northern reaches remains a haven for chaotic forces. Ah, uh, yes, that's the, uh... Fair land. It is my counsel that you begin a northern expansion to quell these agents of turmoil. While this adventure presents All right, Sean. challenges, it offers even greater rewards. Okay, Sean, that's enough. I'll take my leave, Majesty, so Thank that you. you may consider this undertaking and decide where to begin. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Hey, I mean, I'll just build a gnome ghetto. Uh, you know what? I might. Um, let's do... Well, we could jump into the northern expansion. I haven't played these missions in a long time. Let's go into, uh... I remember these missions being significantly harder than the southern missions. And there's a lot of expert difficulty ones. But yeah, I mean, this is basically how the game goes. You just move between mission and mission. They all have different requirements, different limitations, all that stuff. Um, they're all similar in many ways, but they're a lot of fun. Well, let's go into, uh, let's go into Scions of Chaos. An interesting turn of events, my liege. Three legendary heroes called the Scions of Chaos have issued a challenge to the champions of our settlement. They call on our heroes to meet them on the field of battle. All three scions must be defeated before we can truly claim to have bested them. Okay, so the three scions of chaos are... There's a, a priestess of Crypta, a cultist of Fervus, and a warrior of Discord. Warriors of Discord are basically just huge berserker guys who do tons of damage and have, like, no armor and also are very stupid. Like, their AI is actually very, very dumb. Um, they berserk a lot... They don't tend to buy stuff to, like, help themselves, except weapon upgrades sometimes. Um, but they do a crap ton of damage. Uh, the Priestesses of Crypta are... I'll show you those guys, actually, because they're kind of hilarious. And the Cultists of Fervus are these little knife-throwing dudes who wander around. They can turn into animals, which is sometimes hilarious when all of a sudden this tiny naked guy in a mask transforms into a bear and punches somebody's head off. And they plant poisonous herbs, which can be harvested by rangers to uh, poison their weapons without having to go through the rogues. Now, here's the big limitation, all right? You can't build any temples except Crypta and Furbus. You can't build Wizards Guild's marketplaces, so this cripples your economy, non-human races, outposts, which are an expansion building, or embassies, which are another expansion building. So you start with an outpost instead of a and a magic bazaar. These are new buildings. The outpost is basically a smaller uh, palace. And the Hall of Champions, I forget what exactly the Hall of Champions does. The mausoleum. Uh, some of these, I don't even remember what they what they are for. Um, we're going to go ahead and build a warrior's guild, though. And we'll recruit a cultist or two. We get healing through Fervus. We also get illusionary hero and vines, both of which are really good spells. So we're going to upgrade that. And we'll get some, uh, we'll get some items. Versus a bow. Let's go ahead and build a temple to Crypta. Cause... Magic Bazaar now offers fine new elixirs, your majesty. We got to the... I can't build it. Come on. Let's build a ranger's guild instead. That's a little bit smaller. Sovereign, 
Oh my god, she's already here. She's level 35. She's coming to kill me. No, Sister Spirit Void, no! Please, God! Please leave. Please leave, Sister Spirit Void. Yeah, she's literally just one-shotting everyone. She has 180 hit points. Oh lord. In the name of the sovereign. So to get out. So Go away. So She's killing all my peasants. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. I remember this mission for sure. So Can I cast vines on her or something? Will that help? Oh my god, she's attacking the palace. And all my heroes right now are ranged, which do, like, nothing to skeletons. Let's throw up some illusionary heroes to help distract her. Oh, God. Oh, this is the worst. She's right there. And the problem is her attack heals her because it's like a vampiric magic cloud. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably, uh... Yeah, we may have, uh... We may have to... Hmm. We may... Hmm. We may need to restart this. Because having her just, like, casually swagger into the middle right at the start like that... Not really survivable as such. Let me spam out some cultists real quick. We're gonna get we'll get the warriors guild up. They should at least be able to fight the skeletons. We can't ever upgrade the outpost. The outpost just is what it is. Alright, skeleton. Oh my god, here she comes again. Why? Go away. If I can get upgraded to level 3 on the Temple of Fervus, I might be able to hit her with the vines and keep her away. But it's still not going to save me. What does the Sorcerer's Abode do again? I'm going to build it just to see, because I don't remember what it does. Well, I'll build it in a little bit, I mean. Okay, she's leaving. Good. Ah, yes, the great hero Tasty Bunny. You'll love to see it. Our magic bazaar now offers fine new elixirs, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. Upgrade that. No, Sister Cold Touch, don't do it. Don't do it! Oh my god, please. A local blacksmith offers new services. Please complete. Vines! Vines! Okay, so we've got a Warrior of Discord out, so... As I said, Warriors of Discord, very little armor, huge attack level. While she's vined, she can't attack, so we just have to keep her vined. What did you just do? 
Okay, yeah, yeah. This is how we're gonna do this. No vines, vi no vines on her. Vines, vines. I accidentally vined my own guy. I'm not sure why that's an option, but okay. So we've got Sister Cold Touch. <laughs> oh, Howl of Discord. That's right. Okay, so she's dead. <laughs> Okay, well, there we go. That's nice. Uh, let's throw down a couple of inns to make some money. And a guardhouse near them. Oh, okay, there's Glowing Stream. All right, same thing. Glowing Stream is bringing every animal in the world to attack us. Craterus on the brink might actually be able to win that, but I'm going to throw a healing on him just to make him more likely to do so. No, I need... I, I, I really... I really need vines right now. Like, vines are important at the moment. Please give me vines. I don't have the money for it. Let me heal up that werewolf who's on my side. Crater is on the brink, though. Crater is going absolutely ham. Crater is doing God's work right now. Glowing stream. Okay, I think we got him. I think we got him, boys. Yeah, we got him. Good old Craterus on the brink. Uh, one thing you can say about Warriors of Discord, they level quick. If they don't die instantly, they level. Whew, okay. <laughs> hey, Baroon. What does Hall of Champions do? Yeah, it lets you recruit older heroes, I think. Uh, oh my god, what happened here? No, not Craterus, no! Don't you die on me, Craterus! Craterus, no, 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 fuck. I lost Craterus. Okay. Well. Um... Um, In the name of the sovereign. Tasty Bunny's just out here throwing knives at these plants, but I can't make any money because they're right outside my outpost and they kill my tax collector. Okay, I lose. Like, I, I, I'm not even joking, I just lost. In the name because of this. I can't... I can't make any money because... Oh good, now he's here. Right. Well, okay then. The royal treasury is nearly empty. In the name of the sovereign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to play this the cheap way, I guess. Alright. Let's throw down the Hall of Champions, and yeah, I think that lets me recruit some high-level guys of my own. Right off the bat. <laughs> Why are those there? Yeah, I'm not, you know, look. Sometimes these things just happen to you. There's Sister Dread, okay. I think this is one of those games where you just don't, like, really do things. You just kind of win the fights, and that's all you can do. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. Place a long duration, but no, this doesn't let you recruit. It's the um, that no, that lets you place bounties. It's the there's another one that lets you get. Sovereign, a building has been ah, upgraded. fuck it. 
I have. All right, we've got vines. 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 Yeah, that didn't... That Yeah, that was a waste. I thought that was another thing. There is one that lets you recruit older heroes, as I recall, but it's not that. I can't... No, fuck you. Alright, we need some priestesses. Wither is a good spell, so is Animate Bones. I don't think I can afford to upgrade this, though. Oh god. She's she's loose. She's loose. Yeah, the embassy, that's right. Yeah, I'm not allowed to build an embassy in this uh in this level. How injured is she? Not injured enough. Yeah, just keep throwing knives. Just keep throwing knives, my dudes. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. <laughs> Those two cultists are up to, like, well over level 10 already. Okay, so we've got two level level 10 plus cultists. Good. Uh, I don't need any of those. I don't know what the Sorcerer's Abode does, but I don't think it'll help me, really. Let's get a Warrior of Discord. Let's get some inns, like an inn or two. For purposes of cash money. Okay, here comes the... Here comes the charge of the gleeful beetle. Let's lock him down real quick. We should be able to take him out all right now. Although he does have a lot of health, and I don't have much money left. Oh god, I cast that on the wrong person. I was trying... I hate the way you're allowed to just just straight up target your own people with those spells. Okay, we got a couple ins. That's good. My sisters are leveling up, which is good. Gleeful Beetle is, unfortunately, only a little bit injured. Corpus, I really need you to be hitting harder than that. Okay, I think we've got him surrounded sufficiently. Sister Sinius will help. Or si Sister Simmons, I'm sorry. Savory Apple and Radiant Vine are both super, super charged right now. Just incredibly hench. Okay, we got him, and the, um, the Warrior of Discord should not be a problem after that. Okay, here comes, here come the plants. But we have enough, I think, at this point that we can fight our way through them, I think. They are gonna take some of our, our guys down with them, though. I lost Pickant Daisy. Okay, but yeah, with the sisters having their that ranged magic attack and with the two really high level cultists, we can do it. All right, we're good. We got it. What caused the flower apocalypse? It just happens. They just spawn. They they spawn at this point in the game. I like that you have two bears throwing knives. Yeah, no, shapeshifting doesn't change their attack. They just always have the throwing knife attack. It's kind of hilarious. But uh yeah, at, at super high levels, cultists are really really effective. Um, their attack isn't very great, but everything else about them, like their various spells and the charm monster ability and all of that, is really great. Okay, here comes Grovus Malignus. We're gonna drop Wither on him real quick. Oh god, they're all scared of him. God damn it. 
They're too scared of him to fight. He is gonna get swarmed by skeletons here. Yes, I know the royal treasury is nearly empty, but look. We're doing what we can, alright? <laughs> this is why priestesses are good, okay? All these skeletons have just been spawned by the priestesses. There we go. Now we're gonna have some bears throwing knives at him. They love turning into bears and throwing knives. And... And since he was surrounded by skeletons and he's not very resistant to magic, Savory Apple, be careful. Be careful, Savory Apple. <laughs> Alright, yeah, we got him. He's going down. Have I ever played Warlock? No, I don't think I have. Vines. Have some vines, asshole. Yeah, fuck you, that's right. You just stand there, surrounded by vines, while my people throw knives and magic at you. Yeah, I bet you thought you were cool. You thought you were real cool, huh? Uh, so priestesses are just D2 mages. Yeah, basically, they can cast, uh... <laughs> they can cast Drain Life, and they can cast Horde of Skeletons. Ugh. Alright, uh, yes, a significant political victory. Yes, fantastic. Um, I actually only lost four heroes in that mission, but that's because I only recruited 11. So this is kind of the Northern Expansion. The Northern Expansion is full of a whole bunch of, like, of these gimmick levels. Um, that have, I mean, like, note, that was the beginner difficulty. And it wasn't the beginner difficulty, it was the beginner difficulty because overall, the mission isn't that challenging. But, it's just kind of bullshit. Like, you have to know what's gonna happen beforehand in order to win it. Like, I did not recall that those, those plants spawned. Like, I just didn't remember that was a thing. So, uh... It, when it happened the first time, I'm just sitting there like, well, fuck, uh, okay, I guess I, I guess I die then. Um, the Northern Expansion, I would say, was not nearly as good as the, the first game, kind of for that reason. The first game had a lot of those gimmicks, but they were less immediately crushing. Like in, um, well, like in Quest for the Magic Ring, where when you destroy the thing with the ring in it, and then all of a sudden, oh, these super powerful magic spirits spawn and kill all your heroes. Yeah, but they don't normally kill you. Like, they don't come to your town. They just wander around, and you can kind of build back up and wipe them out. It's fine. Up here, these guys just come to your town, and if you're not perfectly prepared, they wipe you out. And then, if you kill a couple of them, the plants spawn around your outpost, and if you're not perfectly prepared, they wipe you out. So there's a couple of just instant hard fail conditions in this scenario. Um, let's actually pop back down south for a minute. This might end up being a slightly shorter stream, because this game is kind of broken up into these, like, little snippets. Like, you play a scenario for 15 minutes or whatever, and then it's done, and you move on to the next scenario. So there are some built-in kind of breaking points. Um, this quest is pretty fun. You have to take Rescue the Prince first. This is a pretty fun quest, but you have to do several of these, uh, first. But let's go ahead and do... Let's do a deal with a demon and just kind of show off the economy a little bit. Mighty leader, forgive this intrusion, but a terrible presence has visited our castle. A demon. He claims he's here to collect on a debt owed to him by your mother. Can this be true? Since we were unable to immediately deliver the requested bounty, he said he'd return later for triple the amount of gold, or he'd curse the entire village. He then vanished in a cloud of foul-smelling green smoke. Your Majesty. I hope you have a plan. Something must be done before he returns. Okay, so deal with the demon is very simple. There are no limitations. You have to make 100,000 gold within 40 days. So in this mission, you just have to build economy. Everything else is super, super secondary. You start off with a bunch of good stuff, which is good. Uh, including a warrior's guild that's way the hell out there. You also start off with a gambling hall, which is a trick. It's there to trick you into trying to gamble, Highness, which is a terrible idea. So what you need to do here is 
You build marketplaces. Majesty, the local blacksmith offers new services. And you recruit priestesses. Uh, harpies are kind of a mid-level monster. They're dangerous, but not like absolutely destructive. So yeah, you recruit priestesses. You do not gamble. Um, in fact, it, it's sometimes worthwhile to destroy the gambling hall. And this is one of those scenarios where you build a rogues guild. And you build a rogues guild, but you don't necessarily recruit rogues. Alright, so here comes the troll. As trolls are wont to do. One step closer to I need my priestesses to be fighting these people, but they're sending out the skeletons. Skeletons are pretty good little patrol Trouble. monsters. So they're helping out a bit. Sister Quellist here is gonna... Probably can take out that troll. Priestesses are actually pretty good at taking out melee monsters. Uh, this is a lot of trolls, though. Like, wow. That's a surprising troll quantity. Good old Sir Promethean can help out. Or not. Maybe he can just run in terror. The bastard. Okay. All right, priestesses are summoning out some more skeletons. That's good. That troll, they actually let the trolls destroy my marketplace. How dare you, you swine. Oh, you absolute bastards. Okay, so the extortion, if you're having trouble getting tax collectors out and keeping them alive, extortion is great. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. Is the plan to kill the demon? No, you cannot kill the demon. The demon is unkillable. You can only negotiate with the demon. Uh, that guy is going to die at some point. Also, there is an unaligned rogues guild around. Oh my, you bastard, you killed my wizard. How dare you? How dare you? And it looks like I am kind of having trouble getting a, uh... Getting my taxes out. Your Majesty, the royal treasury is nearly empty. So I may need to... Don't you dare die to a goblin shaman. Come on now. How would you live with the shame? But yeah, now my priestesses are starting to level up. They're showing how dangerous they really are. They're spamming out those, uh, them skeletons. Let's go ahead and build an inn real quick. Since I'm having trouble keeping a marketplace alive, we'll try an inn instead. I can't afford building. Inn, not marketplace. Inn. I'm not gonna bother researching veteran guards. I'm out of here. Yeah. So like this guy. Now here's the nice thing. Uh, these, these enemy rogues can actually be bribed to attack their own shit, which is handy. Yeah, upgrading the rogues guild does definitely help, and I need to do that, but it's gonna take a minute. Also, I really have never understood the placement of this warrior's guild that's way the hell out here. Um, unfortunately, losing that early marketplace really is a huge blow just because it reduces my income so much. Um, you need a lot of income quickly to win this mission, because right now we're on day four already. Only have till day 40. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna put a bounty on the enemy rogues guilds. Because if you put a bounty flag on an enemy rogues guild, what'll happen is the enemy rogues will start trying to cap to get it. This warrior is poisoned and is almost certainly going to die. He's going to kill some of the rogues first, so that's okay-ish. It's not great. We also just need to clear some of these dens. But getting rid of some of these rogues is the first thing. 
Now, fortunately, skeletons, like priestesses of Cryptospawn, are basically immune to rogues, because rogues use crossbows, and skeletons have a huge missile resistance. So we can get in here, we can clear out these rogues' guilds, then we don't have to worry about these assholes anymore. And our heroes get some money and experience from it, which is great. Another day, Crypta. I don't know why you're fleeing in terror, Sister Quellist. You've got you've got three skeletons with you. You're fine. There is nothing to fear here. There we go. Yeah, clear them out. Yes, I know the Royal Treasury is nearly empty. It's because we're low level and we haven't been able to uh, get any taxes. Really, strategically, what I should have done probably is upgrade this first thing, like right at the start of the game. Let's get another inn built. Okay, so as you can see here, yeah, the enemy rogues are literally attacking their own house in exchange for the 500 gold bounty. So we'll take out the rogues guild, not have to worry about them stealing our crap, and then we can settle down to really building the economy. A lot of Sosivar going around. Alright, that should be it. Excellent. And that was, I think, the last of the rogues dead as well. So, bully for us. We got rid of them. And now, we've got another inn built. Uh, 503. Oh my god, I'm literally one gold short. That's hilarious. Got some creature dens up here that we should also clear. Put like 400 gold on one of them. Increase my minimum. And yeah, I, I really want to level that up, but I need to get a, uh, I need to get a marketplace first. Get in the guardhouse. There you go. There's also a treasure chest right there that nobody has picked up. Wish they would. I... okay. Yeah, that troll's busy fighting the guardhouse, that's fine. He's fighting them, that's also fine. We got 800 gold. Let's go ahead and upgrade the rogues guild to make extortion better. And we will definitely want to get a marketplace and some trade outposts put up. Uh, this guardhouse is getting the shit kicked out of it by this troll. I'm actually not sure if the peasant is going to arrive in time. Withering the troll makes its attack slower, so we have the chance to actually get up here and repair this guardhouse before it gets burned down by the troll. Oh, sister. Oh, sister. Oh, sister, get in the inn. Ah, oh, goddammit, she died. That's a real shame. Is this the only game in the series? If not, is it the only thing worth buying? Um, I think this game is a lot better than Majesty 2 is. So, I would say, yeah, buy this one if you're gonna buy one. There is a Majesty 2. It's not very good, in my opinion. So, I would say, if you're gonna buy one, buy this one. Also, I would also say, I'd really like it if... Sister Jorellen here would... take out some of these lairs. Yeah, just like this lair, this creature den, you're right there. Go ahead, take it down. Alright, fantastic. I love it. Good stuff. Good job, everybody. Doing good. Sister Dorota, you coward. Get back here and fight. Fight like a priestess. 
418 gold. Yeah, we're gonna hold off on the extortion for just just yet. We just need to build up 1425 for a marketplace. As soon as we can get 1425, we're gonna get the marketplace built. And that will increase our income by a lot. Okay, we got a fountain there, that's nice. So we got an extra tax collector from that. Oh, we get the marketplace. I guess we will put the marketplace down here. We'll want to get rid of the gambling hall though. Just get rid of it. Burn it down. We do not want that in our town here. In a way, it's kind of nice to keep the uh, the enemy rogues around a little bit longer just because they'll respond to flags like this very willingly. But on the other hand, it's, it's worth getting rid of them. It really is. All right, marketplace. Let's get a gnome hovel going. The gnomes will enable us to build much more quickly. Several missions in Majesty 2 where everything depends on where the first few peasant hovels are placed. I've heard that. I have definitely heard that. Okay, good. So Promethean here has taken out the creature den. Our peasants should hopefully be on the way to destroy something. No, don't visit the gambling hall. Burn the gambling hall down. Come on. A thousand gold. A thousand gold to burn down the gambling hall. You know you want it. You know you want that money. Your Majesty, the royal treasury is nearly empty. <sighs> I, they, uh, boy. I just want the gambling hall destroyed. That's what I want right now. Your Majesty, our new building is complete. It's day 12. We definitely still have time to make it, but it's going to be a little bit tight unless we can get up two or three marketplaces pretty quick. So as you can see, we automatically spawned another gnome hovel as soon as we built one. But all we really need is... Research Market Day. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. Yeah, I might want to recruit, like, one rogue. Just to do that. Alright, Rolo, go bounty hunting. That's right, there you go. Perfect. And off the repair queue. We also need to repair that guardhouse, but that will have to wait for a minute. So here's the strategy to make a lot of money. You have several marketplaces. You keep them on market day as often as possible. Sovereign? Your marketplace now serves you better. You upgrade them to level 3. Once you have like three marketplaces on level 3 and you're just cycling uh, market day over and over and over, you're pulling in thousands of gold. So the gambling hall is going to go down. We could extort, but I don't need to right now. Want to clear out some dens so that we don't get so many... Trolls and such coming out. Sister Quellus will take that down pretty well. We got rid of our gambling hall. We need a guard house to guard the marketplace. Sir Promethean is still the one lonely warrior for him. No, rat. Rat? 
Oh my god. You fucking... I hate that. And he picked up the money from the marketplace first. Oh, fuck you, rat. You are the worst. Ah, goddamn rats. Alright, I'm just gonna extort because I don't want to wait, so I can upgrade that marketplace quicker. I don't know what you're doing, Dorota. Sister Dorota. Okay, that creature den's gonna go down. I don't care about that statue. Marketplace is up to level 2. Fantastic. We're gonna research arrows in the guardhouse. Once again, we're gonna extort real quick. There we are. Another troll coming to attack our marketplace. Do not allow this troll to burn down the marketplace. Do not. We've improved the guardhouse. Guys. Guys. The troll. The troll. I must urgently discuss the matter of the troll. Oh, thank God. Okay. We got a whole bunch of rats running around. The bastards, how dare they. There we go, market day, just in time for that tax collector to come take the money. Don't put a bounty on my tax collector. Another troll up there. Um, I think the trolls are mostly spawning from this castle. So we definitely need to deal with that at some point, but... I also need to upgrade the palace still. I've been talking about that, and I haven't done it and it's day 17, so that needs to happen. Sovereign, a building has been upgraded. Oh my god, the trolls. There are way too many trolls. Sister Quellist, you are level 9. Do not run away from this 13 HP troll. Yes, more gold for me. Please, bring me more gold. Please and thank you. That money. Excellent. I just need 2,800. The one thing that I don't really like about the priestesses is they're so fragile that they they just run from anything, even at high levels. Because even though they're powerful, none of their powers give them any defenses. Yeah, the trolls are definitely coming from this castle. That's almost enough. We're just gonna do it. There we go, now we can upgrade to level two. Excellent. Aha, Rans Drep, with his steel dagger, is coming to claim the bounty. Hey, there's 1,200 gold in that evil castle, so if I can break it down, that'll inject some money into the economy. No, Rons! Run! Run, Rons! <laughs> in the name of the sovereign. Sovereign. 
All right, is anyone coming to... Okay, good. We've got a couple heroes coming to burn down that castle. That will slow down the influx of trolls. Which is good. We've got our tax collector wandering around the inn district. Picking up cash. Make his minimum return 500. Yes, you are, Rons. Yes, you are. You gotta love gnomes. Alright, let's get a trading post. Up in the corner here. So we can get some caravans going. We're gonna set that guy to be minimum pick up 100, so he will pick up fewer things. What if you have trading posts? Uh, trading posts help, that's why I'm starting to build them now. It's day 20, we're halfway through the period, and it may seem like I don't have any money. I might still actually make it, I'm not sure. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but in the last few days of this scenario, you can end up making a lot of money very, very quickly if you set up. If you have trading posts, if you have inns, if you have marketplaces, then uh, your your income can, like, skyrocket all of a sudden. Um, let's get a... What's the second marketplace going to cost? 1800 Yeah, let's get the second marketplace, and then we'll upgrade that to level 3. And the evil castle is just about... Done. Excellent. And you don't need to do anything about the trading post. I don't need to research healing potions. I don't need healing potions for the trading post. The tra trading post is only there to make me cash. Okay, another marketplace. Right. Right. It should be close to the first marketplace, but, like, you don't want it to be... You want to be away from the sewer entrance, for one thing. Come on. Come on, give it to me, give it to me. Do I have to really have to build it all the way out here? What the fuck? All right, build it right there then. Okay, I no longer really want these rogues. So we're just gonna go ahead and put a Put like a $500 attack flag on that guy. Because I don't really need him. I don't really want him. You need your minimum pickup to be 50. All your minimum return 400. Get another marketplace going. We'll research protection rings there. Now we're making some money. Sovereign, your marketplace now serves you better. <laughs> Rollo the Fist is hunting down his compatriot. And we've got our first caravan coming in. And we should build more trading posts when we have a second. Because they will get us the moolah. The cash money. Okay, Tam got away, unfortunate. Sovereign! A building has been upgraded. So, the thing about trading posts, and the reason why they make actually so much more money than you might think, is because uh, trading post income is multiplied by the level of the marketplace that the caravan reaches. So this caravan's carrying 555 gold, but if it comes into this level 2 marketplace, it will actually put into the marketplace over a thousand gold, if I recall correctly. Yep, there it goes. 1,100 gold, so that's 1,700 coming back to me. We're going to upgrade that marketplace to level 3. Sovereign, your marketplace now a troll you has been spawned because trolls are spawned by money, which is kind of hilarious, I find. Sovereign, a building has been upgraded. Pestilence and decay. 
You said stolen money is taxable money? Yes, stolen money is taxable, but uh, the other thing that you have to consider about that is rogues pay less tax than other people. That is a true fact. Uh, that trading post now costs the absolute earth. I think a third marketplace is in order. So now we've got two level three marketplaces. We got caravans coming in pretty regular. Uh, we can build more inns as well for money, for income. Sovereign, a building has been upgraded. Go ahead, throw up a couple of them, get arrows in the guardhouse. A district of inns just absolutely surrounding a guardhouse is probably the single most efficient way to generate money besides having like four marketplaces. But as you can see, our income has now gone up. A new building is complete. I don't need to upgrade this. Your Majesty, a new building is complete. And I don't think there's a whole lot more that I need to build except for more income generation. So like just inns basically, inns and marketplaces. Alright, just cancel that. Now, nah, I mean, leave it. It doesn't hurt. Let me put like a $200 exploration flag down there. $200 up there. This rat man is attacking the wizard's guild, which would normally be a terrible idea, but there are actually no wizards there, so you know, he's fine. I face death with renewed strength. All right, so we've got our two level three marketplaces. We've got all of our inns. We're up to see, we made 4,500 in like one day, just there. We can build a third marketplace, which we will put kind of down here-ish. Actually, we kind of want it to be over here. It's a shame that's where our sewers are. Let's put it out here by the Rogues Guild. And we'll build another guardhouse for dropping off cash in out there. And we'll put a couple more inns surrounding. And that, I think, should make it. Yeah, we'll only have 13 days of, of generating money, but I think that will be enough, especially if we put another trade post up here, maybe. But we got the caravans rolling in, we got the passive income from the marketplaces, we got the inns. I think we're alright. Yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of making more money overall, Market Day doesn't do a ton. Especially with as as Johan is putting out pointing out upgraded marketplaces, it actually in some ways hurts you. But Market Day, what Market Day does is it gives all the money at once. So it makes it more controllable, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, it also has an interesting tactical effect in that it can be used to force heroes to leave the marketplace and go do something with their lives, which otherwise they sometimes don't like to do. Your Highness, we've improved the God Yeah, so these trade posts are kind of too close to my marketplaces, so they're not generating a ton Sovereign, of gold. A building has been upgraded. Like, they're not worth a ton because they're too close. We need a trading post up here, is what we need. Because that's about as far from any of my marketplaces as you can get. We'll get that upgraded to level 3. And then we should be able to pretty much put the game on fast forward. And let it run, and I think we're gonna make it. Yeah, Market Day doesn't increase the amount of money that you, like, have in the caravan or anything. It just gives you, you know, some ticks of income.
So let's make the game fast. And see how we do. It's day 29. We've got 11 days to make our 100,000. We might not make it, actually. Fuck you, troll. Well, we're at 17,000 now. Because we've got a lot of tax collectors because we've had some fountains spawn. And I don't want to spend the money that it would take to upgrade the palace. Again, it would give me another tax collector, but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. I face death with renewed strength. The sovereign. So We've really got so many skeletons wandering around that it's becoming kind of a problem. Alright, 40 grand! How we doing? Fifty grand, five days to go. It's actually going to be kind of tight. Don't you need to do a big extortion at the end? Uh, you can, but eh. Uh, palace increases income ticks from the markets. Yeah, the the higher level palace makes everything work better, but I would have to recruit five more heroes and then spend several thousand upgrading the palace, and it would take time. And it's already day thirty-seven. I don't think I'm going to make it actually. I don't think I'm quite going to make it, because we're at 65,000 right now, day 38. Eh, I don't know. We've got $3,600 just in this marketplace, though. We desperately need a tax collector to come here. In fact, we're going to take one of these tax collectors and make their minimum pickup, like, really high, so they only collect the giant amounts. In the name of the sovereign. But I think... Probably... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we need to collect 25,000 in a little over a day. Oh, uh, not sure that's gonna happen. Market day. Give me all the money. Give me all the money we can get. We got one more day. I don't think we're gonna make it. Oh no! Yeah, I'm a little too slow. Yeah, I mean, elves would have worked well because elves double the, the marketplace income. I just chose gnomes because they're kind of funny. And I hadn't shown them off yet. Take the money! Take the money! That tax collector is so slow. Nah, we're not gonna make it. Rip, fifteen thousand short. The day is lost, Majesty. There we go. Always tomorrow. <laughs> I couldn't gamble at all, Perun. I burned down the gambling hall. But as you can see, we actually made enough money. It's just that we spent almost fifty thousand of it. So yeah, so you know, this game is honestly, if the if you pay attention to what you're doing, like really close attention. The game is not hard, but it's interesting, and it's kind of fun that you don't have perfect control over what your people do in this game. So I didn't mean to click restart. So that's Majesty. It's a, it's a fun little game. It's a game that I played a lot, like I said, when I was young. Um, the interest, a lot of times, is kind of figuring out the trick in the mission. Like in Deal with the Demon. The trick with it, Deal with the Demon is to get up three marketplaces and a whole bunch of inns basically as quick as you can. Like, um, losing that first marketplace to the troll, that, if that marketplace had stayed alive, I probably would have just won there. Um, you know, I would have come through, because that one marketplace slowed me down by, I don't know, four or five minutes? 
something like that, in, in terms of building up my income stream. Uh, and it made the other marketplaces more expensive because that price doesn't reset if a marketplace gets burned down. So that slowed me, you see what I'm saying. It all kind of stacked up. Having that active from the beginning probably would have done it, but that, that troll slipped by and nobody stopped him. So it was a shame. But yeah, it's very doable without elves. I mean, doing it with elves is quite easy. Doing it without without elves is fine. Um, doing it with gnomes or dwarves. Dwarves kind of lets you defend a lot more easily. And of course, gnomes let you build things more quickly. I never actually recruited a whole bunch of gnomes, though. So, uh, yeah. That is Majesty Gold HD. It's a fun one. I, I recommend it. It's on Steam. The, um, the HD remake of it, which is what I'm playing right here. Uh, I think it's worth the money. It's, uh, it's almost more a puzzle game than a strategy game in some ways, but it is very entertaining that you have these little guys wandering around, guys and gals both, and uh, they really do have their own mind about stuff. Like So like in that mission, I was sitting there like, please kill the troll, please kill the troll. Nobody was going to kill the troll, and I didn't have enough money to put a big bounty on him, so he just got to do what he wanted because the heroes were either too scared or they were busy with something else. So in any case, I think I am going to cut this one a little bit short. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, yeah, this is on GOG as well as Steam, I believe. There's a, I have the Steam version. There is a GOG version. And uh, that's going to do it for today, I believe. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. really appreciate your attention. Hope you're having as much fun as I am. Tune in again next week. We'll be playing a different game. I may start a... I might go back to Alpha Centauri, or I may start a colonization game, and I haven't really decided. Either would be cool. Um, more history to talk about with colonization, certainly. Alpha Centauri is more kind of a, a futuristic, philosophical sort of thing. So, take care, y'all. I will see you next week. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, look forward to more fun coming up. Take care.